Hi guys, welcome back. In this video I'm going to introduce you to a basic data structure known as the stack. Okay, The stack is a last in, first out data structure, which means that the last value you put into it is the first one that you're going to take out of it. Uh, a stack is a container, um, and similar to how a stack of dishes is a container. Think of a stack of dishes. Right, you have a table. If there's no dishes on that table, then the stack is empty. There's nothing there. Say you come along and put a, a dish on the on the on the table. Well, now you have, you know, a stack of one dishes. Let's say you now put a dish on top of the dish that's already there. Well, you have a stack of two dishes. Let's say you push another dish dish on top of that stack. Well, now you have a stack of three dishes. Now somebody else comes along and they say, well, I need a dish. So what do they do? They don't take the dish off the bottom, right? That'd be a pain. They just take it, well, why not just take it right off the top? So what do they do? They pop a dish off the top of this stack of dishes, right? So the last dish that was put onto the stack is the first one that's taken off, okay? So every time we add a dish to our stack, we're pushing a dish on top of our stack of dishes. And every time we take a dish off the stack, we're popping a dish off of the stack. Okay, if there are no dishes in our stack, then our stack is empty. Okay? Um, but let's say that uh, our stack of dishes is being stored in a cabinet or in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a cupboard or something. Well, then there's only so many dishes we can stack in there, right? Because we got the top of the cupboard that's going to limit how many dishes we can put in there. Okay, so let's say there's only room for 10 dishes, a stack of 10 dishes. Well, once there's 10 dishes in our stack, our stack's full. Okay, so that example illustrates the four fundamental operations of a stack. Okay, the four fundamental operations of a stack. They are push, right, where we push a dish on top of the stack. Okay, uh, there's pop. We pull a dish off the top of the stack. Um, there's is full, right? Where we determine if the if the stack is empty, stack is empty. This is true, right? Um, and then we have, uh, oops, sorry, it's is empty. Okay, if the stack is empty, then this is true. Is full is the fourth fundamental operation. If the stack is full, then this is true. Okay. So in my example here, I'm going to implement a static stack using an integer array. And I'm going to implement these four fundamental operations using standalone functions. Okay, I'll write a push function, I'll write a pop function, I'll write an is empty function, and I'll write an is full function. Okay? Alright. So let's make an int main here and get started. Okay. Int main. Return zero. Okay, and so our stack, our cabinet, we're going to use an array to hold our dishes. Okay, so let's call this thing um, stack. Okay, now I have to determine since this is a static implementation, that means that the size of my stack is going to be fixed. Okay, there are dynamic implementations of stacks using linked lists where your stack can be as big as you have memory, but in this example, we're doing a static implementation, which means no dynamic memory allocation, just means we're going to use a static. Uh, statically allocated array. Okay, so we're gonna have a fixed stack. So we have to determine the size, how many dishes our stack can hold. So let's use a const, constant integer variable to indicate that. Okay, and for this example, we'll uh, have a stack of five dishes, a stack that can hold five integers. Okay, all right. Now we're going to need to keep track of, when we have a stack of dishes, we can just look at the top of, uh, of the stack of dishes and we know which one's the top. Well, in our array, where, since we're going to use an array, there's going to be five values in this thing at any time. How do we know which one is the top and which one is the bottom? Okay, well, let's look at a picture of what the array could look like. Okay, let's say that after this array has been allocated, after it's, after it's been created, Let's say that we have values that look like this. Um, the first element has a 5 in it. The second element has a 9. Third, 3, 10, uh, 12. Right? These are just garbage values. We haven't assigned anything yet. Well, which one of these elements represents the top of the array? I mean, how is this thing going to work? I mean, which, what's the bottom? 
Okay. Well, the way we're going to implement this stack is we're going to assume that the furthest left value, okay, the furthest left element is the bottom, okay, and the top uh, could change, okay. The bottom element could also be the top element. If there's only one element, if there's only one value in our stack, then you know let's 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 put some subscripts here. So one, two, three, four, okay. If uh, there's only one value in our stack, right, then uh, then the top is also the bottom. Well, let's keep track of, let's use a variable that's going to keep track of where the top of our stack is, okay? If, uh, if our stack has two values in it, if there are two dishes in our, in our stack, then we're going to, we're going to use top to indicate that the second element, which has a subscript of one, is the top element. So in this particular case, our stack would consist of the values 9 and 5, right? And the top of our stack is 9, and the bottom of our stack is 5, okay? Now let's say that we wanted to push a value onto the stack. Let's say that uh, we pushed 3 on top of the stack. Well, we would have to increment uh, our top by 1 to indicate that the new top of our stack is now the third element 2 here, right? So now our stack is the top of our stack is three, the bottom of our stack is still five, and then that middle value, excuse me, that middle value is nine. Okay, if we push another item onto the stack, we increment the top variable, right? The top of our stack is now ten. Okay? Bottom is still five. Now let's say that we want to pop a value off of our stack. Okay, well we decrement this top variable down to two. Okay. Ten is no longer considered on our stack because the top is now uh, the third element, subscript 2, so now this is our stack. Okay. We pop another value off the stack, <clears throat> we decrement the top, so now our stack consists of this, and 9 is the top. Okay. All right, so what happens if we have an empty stack, though? I mean, how do we represent that? Well, the way we're going to represent that, we can't, we can't have the top be 0, indicate that our stack is empty. Why? Because, well, Zero is a valid subscript. It points to five, right? And the way this is written, the way we've been explaining it so far, um, the top of our stack is the value five. There is something in here. So let's let's uh, let's use an invalid subscript to indicate that the stack is empty. Okay? If we say we'll just say that um, that uh, negative one means that the stack is empty. Right, negative one is an invalid subscript. It's not pointing to anywhere inside of our array, so this means that our array is empty. Okay, so, or excuse me, our stack is empty. Okay, so, what if our stack's full? Well, what's that going to mean? Well, our stack is full if the top, right, indicates the fifth element. Right, since our particular stack here is set to a size of five, it has five elements. So if the top is set to four, that means that this thing is our entire stack 5 9 3 10 and 12 right the top of the stack is the fifth element which has an index of 4 and that's 12 okay the bottom is 5 okay so our stack is going to be full when top right is set to the last element and our stack is empty when top is set to negative 1 okay all right so let's add this top variable and let's initialize it to negative 1 why because initially our stack is empty. Okay. Now again, there are garbage values inside this array of five elements. It is this top variable that's indicating pretty much the state of our stack. Okay. Let me clear this thing right here. Okay. So negative one means that our stack is empty. Basically, it means that all these valid values here are invalid. Whatever garbage values happen to be there, they're not part of our stack. Right? Negative one means our stack is empty. Okay, all right, so negative one means an empty stack, okay? So let's, uh, let's start implementing these um, fundamental operations using standalone um, functions, okay? So let's do the prototypes for it, and let's do the easy ones first, okay? Let's do um, uh, is uh, empty, okay? So is empty is going to return true or false. If there's nothing in the stack, then it's going to return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false. Okay. So we need a boolean return type. We're going to call this thing is empty. OK. 
Okay. What's our parameter gonna list going to look like? Well, we're just going to have a single integer Okay, in this case. Why? Because, well, what we're going to do is we're going to pass top here, and if it's negative 1, we're returning true. That's it. This function is going to be really easy. Okay, so let's write the function definition. It's empty, int, top. Okay. I'll use this, the same parameter name, or I'll use for the parameter name top. These are two different variables. This is the parameter that's local is empty. This is the top variable that is local domain. They're, they're different variables. I can just use the same name because they're different scopes. Okay? One's a parameter, one's a variable defined in name. Okay, so uh, what does the function body of my is empty function have to look like? Well, all I'm doing is determining whether or not uh, whether or not this top variable is going to have negative one in it. So the function call, let me step back for a second, the function call for something like this is gonna it's gonna look something like this. If is empty uh, then we'll say see out the stack is empty. Okay? So what's going on here? Well uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to pass the current top value, right, to our is empty function. Okay, so negative one's copied into the parameter here. Right? And so now negative one's in there, so all we have to do is say, okay, well, return top equal to negative one. Okay? So this is going to return true if uh, top is negative one, right? And remember, negative one indicates that our stack is empty, false otherwise. That's all this function has to do. Okay? So understand, don't memorize this code, understand why we're returning true, why it's going to return false. Okay? All right. <clears throat> So basically, if top is negative 1, this thing's returning true, otherwise it's returning false. We've defined negative 1 to mean the stack is empty. Okay? So that's our first fundamental operation. Okay? Let's do our second fundamental operation, okay? uh, which is uh, is full. Okay? So this is going to return true if our stack is full, if there's no more room in the cupboard to put more dishes. Right? If our array is full of values for you know, holding our stack, or our, our array, which is representing our stack, is full of values. Okay. So what's our parameter list going to look like? All right. Well, first thing we're going to have to do, we're going to have to, we're going to compare the top here against. Uh, we're going to have to determine. Remember, we talked about if the top is pointing to this last element, that means that the stack is full. Okay. So we're going to have to pass um, the top variable. And we're going to have to pass the size of the stack, okay? And I'll show you why. You'll see why as we write this thing, okay? So basically what we're doing is we're, we're not looking at the stack itself, per se. We're looking at these variables that are indicating the state of the stack, right? The top and the stack size. So let's look at is uh, full, okay? Okay. So there's our parameter. We're going to be passing the, you know, the current state of where this top variable is. That will be copied into here. And then we're going to copy the overall size of our stack into here. Okay. Or the capacity, I should say. Maybe capacity is a better way to put it. Capacity of our stack. Okay. So what are we going to do? Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to compare the top, you know, where it's currently set to, to uh, the size or the capacity excuse me, of our array, minus 1, okay? Okay, what's, so what's going to happen? Remember that, you know, you might be thinking, well, why aren't we just saying, you know, what if top is equal to 5, right? Because there's 5 elements. Shouldn't top indicate be set to 5 if uh, if it's full? Well, well no, because remember, top's going to be pointing to the very last element when this thing's full, right? So top is going to equal, in this particular example, it's going to equal 4 when the stack is full, right? In this particular example, why 4? Because 4 is the element, or excuse me, is the index of the last element of the array, okay? If the array was 10 elements long, if our stack could hold 10 values, then top would equal 9 when it's full, okay? Um, basically what it is, is it's the size of the array minus 1. Why? because indices, the subscripts for an array, start counting at zero. If they started at one, then yeah, we would just say, you know, um, top, if the top is equal to the size, then uh, 
then it's full. But we have to compensate for the fact that uh, indices start counting at zero. So that's why we're subtracting one from here. Okay. But that's all we need to do for is full. So what would the function call look like for that? Well, let's say if is full, uh, we pass the top value, and then we top pass the stack size. Okay. And we'll say see out the stack is full. Okay. All right. So let's let's compile it and just see if it's working so far. Okay. So what we should see is it should say the stack is empty. Okay, so let's compile it. Oh, forgot my preprocessor directive. Okay, we need access to that C out object, so let's put that in here. Stream space SDB. Alright, let's try it again. Alright, now let's run it. Okay, the stack is empty. Why? Because top is set to negative one. Um, which we've defined to mean that the stack is an empty stack. Okay. All right. So those are our first two two fundamental operations. Now let's add. A, let me let me write a function here just to help us before I go any further to help us track what's going on. All right. Well, let's just make this little helper function. We'll make this little function that's going to print the current state of the stack so we can see it growing and shrinking as we as we move along. Okay. So what are we going to pass to this print function? We're going to pass the array containing all the values in our stack. And we're going to pass the current top of the stack. Okay, so what's going to happen is that it's going to print every element of the stack uh, in order from bottom to top. Uh, but it's not going to print any of the invalid values, right? So if the top of our stack is set to 2, then it will only print 5, 9, and 3. 10 and 12 would be invalid values then. Right? They wouldn't be part of our stack. Okay, they're just leftover locations. All right, uh, so let's write that function now. Okay. Let's just go down here and add it on. Okay, and I'll name the first parameter stack again. It's a different, different variable. There are different scopes. I can use the same name. That's okay. Okay. All right. So let's do let's do this. Um, okay, this is going to show us you know, what the stack currently looks like. Okay, we want to start at the first element in the stack, which is zero. Okay, and then we want to go through the top of the stack. Okay. Let's see out uh, stack. I and let's put a uh, let's put a space in between in between each element of the stack, each value in the stack, and then let's move to a new line. Okay, so that's going to help us look at the stack as it's shrinking and it's growing. We're going to be able to display, you know, see what the stack looks like. That's not really a fundamental operation on the stack, right? This is just to help us out, you know, for debugging or, or, or seeing what's going on. All right, so let's add our fourth fundamental operation. Let's push stuff onto the stack. Let's add an operation, a function to throw something, to put a dish on top. Okay, it's not going to return anything. We're not taking anything away from the stack. We're putting something on. So we're going to call that pushing onto the stack. We have to give it the array that's holding our stack. So that's our first parameter. We have to tell it where the current top of the stack is. That's our second parameter. And we have to give it a value to actually put on top of the stack. That's our third parameter. Okay. Alright, so let's define this thing now. Okay, we'll name the first parameter stack, we'll name the third parameter top, and we'll name the third parameter value. Okay, I need to make this second parameter pass by reference. Okay, it's got to be passed by reference. Why? Because I want the changes that I'm going to make to the top variable here permanent. Okay, because what's going to happen is, is when I push something on the stack, I have to update where the top of the stack is. If I want that change to be permanent, i got to use a reference parameter, not pass by copy, which is the default. Okay, arrays are passed by reference by default, so I don't need an ampersand for this thing. Okay, all right, when I make changes to the stack array, it's going to be permanent automatically. 
All right, so we're going to push a value onto the stack. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set. Well, we're going to let's let's assign the value to the stack. Okay, but what what are we going to use for the subscript here? Well, you might think, well, why don't we just use top, right? Well, we're going to, but we can't just do it like this just yet, right? Because what if the stack's empty? Well, then the value that's going to be inside of top is negative one. And so we'd be assigning the value to an invalid array location. Um, it would be trying to set it to the negative one uh, element of the array. There isn't no negative one element of the array. Negative one is not a valid subscript. So what we have to do is we always have to, when we're, when we're adding a value to the stack, we have to increment that top first. Okay. So now if the stack's empty, negative one's passed here to the top, right? top increments to zero. Now we're assigning that value to the first element, which again is the bottom of our stack. Okay, and the next time we do a push operation, uh, top will be zero, then this will increment by one, and then the second element, which will be the new top of our stack, uh, will be set to the new value. So let's, uh, let's do a couple of push operations and, uh, and see how the stack grows. Okay, so let's push. Let's do a push. And we're going to push onto our stack, okay? And we have to indicate where the current top is, okay? And the value that we want to push onto the stack, let's say 99, okay? Now, let's print the stack, okay? That's the stack we want to display, and that's the top of the stack, okay? So let's compile it and run it, okay? Oops, Man. okay. So we've pushed one item onto the stack. That's the top of our stack right there, okay? Let's push another value on. Okay. Let's push another value and print the updated stack. Okay. All right. This time we'll push uh, 66 on top. Okay. Oops. All right. So now we can see. You know, this is this right here is the stack after we push just 99 on. Okay, our second push operation pushes 66 on top of the stack. So now our stack looks like this. 66 is the top, 99 is the bottom. Okay. Let's push another value on. Okay. This time we'll push 42 on. And we're going to see that that stack is going to grow yet again. Okay. 42 is going to be on the top, 99 is still going to be on the bottom. Okay. So. Here's our stack after we pushed 99 on, after we pushed 66 on, after we pushed 42 on. See how it's kind of growing in this direction? 99, again, is the bottom, the furthest right is the top. Okay. We'll do one more, we'll do one more push here. Let's push, um, I don't know, 13 on top. Okay. Okay. All right, so there we go. All right, 13 is now on the top. So our array, basically our array is five elements. We know what the first four values are. All right, this is the zeroth element. We push when we did our push operation. 99 went in, went into the zeroth element. 66 went into the oneth element. 42 in the tooth element. 13 into the threeth element. Right. So this is the first element, second element, third element, fourth element, fifth element. We don't know what's there. Right. Um, we didn't push anything on to take up that extra element. So our print stops at the top, right? We only print through the top. These are the only valid values in our stack, right? This fifth element that would be here, whatever this fifth value is, it's not valid. We're not displaying it, okay? Top cuts us off, okay? So our top is indicating that the fourth element is the top of our stack, okay? Everything to the left of it is underneath it in the stack. All right, so that's our uh, third um, fundamental operation. Uh, we can see now that if we were to uh, do this is empty operation, okay, if we were to run this now, um, we're not going to see the stack is empty. Why? Because it's not, right? Stack is no longer negative one, so the stack is not empty. Okay, let's do a little else here. Maybe make it a little explicit. Let's see how it, um, stack is not empty. Okay. The stack starts off empty. We pushed four things onto the stack, and now the stack is not empty. Okay. 
Okay, so the last fundamental operation that we have to look at is the pop operation. Okay, and pop usually defined as a uh, remove and return operation. Okay, pop is going to remove the top value of the stack uh, or top value from the stack, and then it's going to return it to the calling function. So we're dealing with integers here, so we're going to have a return type of integer. Okay, it's called pop. We're going to have to pass the stack that we want to pop from. We're going to have to pass the top variable, right? So we know where the top value is for us to, to, to pop. Um, and that's uh, that's all we need, okay? There's no third value. We're not pushing anything on. We're just popping. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's define this thing, okay? All right. So we'll name our first parameter stack. We'll name our second parameter top. Again, it's a reference parameter. Why? Because we need to update that top variable. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the value, then we're going to return it. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to create this holding variable, this temporary holding variable to hold that value. Okay. Stack top. So we're assigning to it the current top of the stack. Okay, this is our uh, this is the remove part. It's a two-step process. Remove part. Okay. Uh, oops. Okay. Now we're going to um, finish the second half of this by decrementing top. Right. We're removing the top value. So when we do a when we do our first pop, what's going to happen is is this 13 will be stored in this little value variable here inside this local value variable, and then top gets decremented by one. So the new top now is pointing here. 13 is still in the array, but it's no longer considered valid, right? The only valid values are from the zeroth element through the top element. That's it. So these two elements here are now available for us to push more values on. 13 is going to get overwritten when we do that, okay? So that's why we're decrementing top by one, right? 13 is no longer the top. 42 is now the top. We don't care about anything to the right of top. All right, so that's the remove part. Now we need to do the return part. Okay, and the return part is simply a return statement that returns the value. Okay, very simple. Not a lot going on here. Okay, now again, understand what this operation is doing. It's removing and returning. Okay, so what the operation is doing is determining the code that we're writing. Okay, don't just memorize this code. Okay, it's not going to help you. You have to understand what the pop does, and then you can write the code based off of what the pop's supposed to do. Okay, that being said, let's now uh, do some popping. Okay, so um, so okay, so we will do a C out. Okay, and we'll pop a value. Okay from the stack, and we have to update that top variable, okay? And then we will print uh, the new stack, or the updated stack. It's not a new stack, it's the updated stack, okay? So what we're going to see after this is we're going to see 13 displayed here. Why? Because we've popped 13 off the stack, and then we're sending it to the screen through Cout, okay? And then when we print it, when we print the stack, the updated stack, all we're going to see is 99, 66, and 42 because 13 is no longer on the stack. We removed it and we returned it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's compile and run that. Okay, and that's exactly what happened, right? That's 13, we popped it off the stack right here, and then we sent it to C out, so it was displayed, right? and then we displayed the updated state of the stack. The stack now only has 99, 66, and 42 on it. Okay, so just because I am returning something from a function doesn't mean I actually have to do anything with it. I can just um, pop it and not assign the value anywhere. And that's what I'll do here for this example. Okay, so let's pop another value off the stack and then print the updated stack. Oops, I forgot my semicolon, sorry. Okay, all right, so let's see how the stack changes. Okay, now we've popped 42 off. The only two values left on the stack now are 66 and 99. 66 is the new top of the stack. Okay, let's pop the last, or the next to last value. Okay. 
Now our stack only has 99 on it. Okay, let's pop it one more time. Okay, now our stack's going to be empty. Okay, stack is empty. That's why we, that's why when the print uh, ran, we don't see anything here. What happens if I do one more pop operation? My stack is empty, right? Well, something bad's going to happen. Okay. Um, actually, here. Let's see what. I'll show you what we popped off. Popped off the stack. Okay. Wait, what's this? What's this value here? Let me let me put in here so it's easier to see. These are to read. Why is there this? Um, why is this value here? That, where'd this number come from? It wasn't in our stack. Where'd it come from? Well, keep in mind, remember, there's no boundary checking in C++. So I popped past the bottom of our stack. I went one element past the beginning of the array where this stuff is held. Okay. Remember, it's up to you, the programmer, to make sure this doesn't happen. Okay. So you might throw an exception. Um, you could use this is full or is empty uh, function to keep this from happening. So if I did something like this, uh, if uh, not is empty, right? So the only way we're going to do this is if um, the stack is not empty, okay? Oops. Top, okay? Then we'll do this C out, okay? We'll do this pop operation, right? So this right here is an example of why we have this is empty and why we have this is full, this is full function. Okay. So now if I run this thing, nothing bad happens. Why? Because the stack is indeed empty. So since it's empty, this is going to evaluate to um, false, right? Because is empty is tr is a uh, is true. And so then this not changes it to false. So we skip this pop statement here. Right? It's a pop expression. So everything's just fine. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind when you are dealing with static implementations of stacks that you don't push or pop past the ends of your array. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let me let me pause really quick and I'll uh, write a quick little program and um, that will use the stack to do something interesting. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Welcome back. So I changed our program here. Uh, to do something somewhat interesting. Okay, what's going to happen is is that we're going to enter in uh, integers one at a time. Okay, uh, We're going to basically enter an integer, push it onto our stack until our stack is full. Okay, And each time uh, after we've entered that value, we're going to print out uh, what the stack currently looks like. Once the stack is full, okay, then this while loop is going to terminate. And this while loop, the second while loop, is going to pop all the by excuse me, is going to pop all the values off the stack one at a time and display them. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to use a stack to display the reverse uh, order of the integers that I enter. Right? So if I enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right, in this loop here, popping them off the stack, remember because a stack is a last in, first out structure. So the first value that's going to be popped off is going to be 5, which was the last one I entered. And then we'll display that. Okay, the next one, the, the next top value will be 4, right, which was the second to last value that I, that I entered. And that will be displayed. And then 3, and then 2, and then 1. Okay, so let's run that and uh, watch it in action. Okay, so I'm going to push the first value onto the stack, 99. Okay, so that's what our stack now looks like. Let me push our second value, 66. There's our updated stack. Remember, the furthest right value is the top. The furthest left is the val is the, the furthest left value is the bottom. All right, so let's do 44. All right, let's do um, 42, and finally let's do 7. Okay, so here's what our stack looks like. Okay, and then that while loop pops each value off and sends to the screen. So it pops off 7, which was the top sends it to C out, pops the next value off, 42, sends it to C out, pops the next value off, 44, sends it to C out, etc. Right? So here's an example of how you could use a stack to uh, reverse 
values, right? To, to print the reverse of something. You could do this with strings, you could do this with, with anything, right, that you want to reverse. Okay, great. So, uh, let's summarize. Uh, in this video, we talked about a fundamental uh, data structure known as a stack. Uh, I demonstrated an implementation of a static stack, meaning a stack that is, has a set number of elements, right? We used an array of integers to implement a stack that can hold some integers. We had to use a variable to keep track of where the top of the stack was. We assumed that the bottom of the stack was the zeroth element uh, of the array. We looked at four fundamental operations, is empty, is full, push, and pop. And in this implementation, I used an array and standalone functions to, uh, to implement this stack. Uh, now, I want to stress again, I remind you again, don't just memorize this code, okay? This is code for a specific implementation of a stack done a specific way, right? If you were to get a homework assignment or something that said, you know, write a generic, or excuse me, write a template for a stack, right? A stack class. Um, this code won't help you, right? The code that I've written here in this example was driven by the operations, what I needed the stack to do, okay? I wrote a function push that has code that pushes a value onto a stack given this particular implementation, right? If you were to write a, a, a class template, your code would look, would look a lot different, okay? The thing to remember is what does a push do? What does a pop do? You know, think about it in the abstract. What is a stack? Okay, and then generate your code based off of what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, just memorizing this code isn't going to help you. You have to understand what's going on with the stack, right, and why the code was written the way it was. All right. Okay, so thanks for watching. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Stop by my office hours. Uh, and I'll help you as best I can. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.